This is Coding Math, Episode 55, Aspect Ratio. If you do any kind of front-end UI work, you've almost certainly had to deal with displaying images or videos. We won't go into the specifics of how to load and display them, as that differs by platform, language, and libraries, and really has nothing to do with math. The math part comes into play when you need to display an image of a specific size inside a rectangle that is another size, particularly when the two rectangles have different aspect ratios. Now, many UI frameworks or libraries have this covered for you. You tell the image object how to scale by setting some kind of scale mode property or something, and it takes care of things from there. But sooner or later, you're going to wind up in a situation where you need to do this by hand. So let's see how it works. First of all, let's look at aspect ratio itself. It's the ratio of the different aspects or measurements of a rectangle. Usually we either say width by height, like a multiplication, or width to height as a ratio, or width over height as a division. There wouldn't be any mathematical problem with putting height first, as long as we were consistent. But the convention is to use width first, so we won't bug the system. Now in the early days of home computing, monitor screens usually had resolutions like these. 320 by 240, 480 by 360, and all the way up to about 1440 by 1080. What all those had in common is that they reduced down to an aspect ratio of 4 to 3. Later, a more widescreen 16 to 9 format became more popular. Since we already use the higher resolutions, you see this format mostly in larger sizes, such as 1280 by 720, 1366 by 768, and all the way up to 3200 by 1800. Now, because 4 to 3 and 16 to 9 became the most common ratios for screen sizes, you'll see many videos and large images produced at those same two ratios. The idea being that it would be easy to display them full screen and completely fill the monitor, which would make a lot of sense had they stuck to a single ratio. At any rate, we now have images and videos of all kinds and sizes and ratios, and you'll need to display them in various size containers. Whether that means full screen or the size of your app, or a specific portion of your app dedicated to displaying media. So what are your options when displaying media that doesn't fit in the container you're given? The naive solution is to simply scale the media on both axes to make it fit the box you're given. This winds up distorting the image, squashing it on one axis or stretching it on the other. And this is almost never the right solution. The image here has a square and circle drawn on it to bring out that distortion more clearly. So you want to scale it by the same amount on each axis, but this still gives you two options. Do you make it fit the width of the container or the height? Here, the image has a wider aspect ratio than the container. If we scale it down to fit the width, we wind up with extra space on the y-axis. You can align the image so that it's at the top or the bottom of the container, but we normally center it in the container like so, leaving some space on the top and bottom. This is known as letterboxing because in extreme cases, the video looks like a narrow slot that you put envelopes into. Another option would be to scale the video or image so that it fits the entire height of the container. In this case, the width winds up being too large and part of the media needs to be cropped off, either left, right, or more commonly, a little from both sides. Note that neither one of these solutions is necessarily right or wrong. You have to evaluate which one you want for a given app, or even pass the choice over to the user for a given piece of media. Also note that if you have a wide format container, In a more squarish image or video, the options would be reversed. Making it fit the width would mean cropping something from the top or bottom, and making it fit the height would mean leaving the infamous black bars on the left and right of the video. So enough talking. Let's look at how to handle this in code. I'm going to stick with HTML5 Canvas here. Even though that won't be the most common use case, it lets you size and position elements with pure mathematics, avoiding the various complexities of CSS. Now I've created a canvas element in the HTML, but I'm going to set its size to 640 by 480 in the JavaScript. And immediately I'll fill it with black so we can see exactly where the canvas is. Next I'll create an image element, listen for its load event, and assign it a URL to an image. Here's that image for reference. It's 1280 by 720 a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, so it's not going to fit perfectly into a 4x3 canvas. And again, the shapes there are so that we can better see any distortion that might be caused by the scaling we do. Now when the image loads, I'm just going to draw it into the canvas. 
I'll use the simplest form of the draw image method first, saying image 00. zero. This draws the full image, full size, at 00, zero on the canvas. As you can see, the image is much larger than the canvas. We only see the top left corner of it, so we need to scale it down. The full version of the draw image takes nine parameters. The image to draw, then four parameters to define the source rectangle, and four more for the destination rectangle. Well, we know we definitely want to draw the entire image, so the source rectangle is 00, 0 1280 by 720. You could, of course, use the image width and height to do this dynamically. We're only using this single image, so I've hard-coded it. But what about the destination? We can start out being naive. I'll just put the canvas measurements in here. 0, 0 width height. This scales the image on each axis so that it fits the canvas completely. And as you can see, it distorts the heck out of it. So let's try something better. First, let's try scaling the image's width to the width of the canvas and then adjusting the height from there. I'll create a variable called image width and set it to width. Knowing that measurement, we can use the aspect ratio to figure out what the height of the image should be. Now we happen to know that the aspect ratio is 16 to 9, but let's make it dynamic by calculating it based on the image itself. I'll say aspect ratio equals image width divided by image height. Now I can say image height equals image width divided by aspect ratio. Now we have a width and a height. Let's use those and draw our image. Well, that works, but maybe we want to center the image in the canvas. Down here in the Y value for the destination rectangle, we can say height minus image height all divided by two. Basically, you're finding the center of the canvas with height divided by two and subtracting half of the image height to get where the top of the image should be, then using some algebra to avoid the multiple division. There, now our canvas is centered. And we have the letterboxing going on with black bars on the top and bottom. Success. Now, how about letting it fill the height? This would be a different option or mode. I'm going to create a variable called scale mode and set it to fill. We can consider the first mode we just did as the show all mode. Down in our drawing code, I'll rearrange things a bit. I'll create the variables up here, but leave image width and image height undefined. We can define aspect ratio though. Then where image width and height are defined, that will get wrapped in a conditional checking for scale mode equals show all. Then we have an else if scale mode equals fill block. Here we do the exact opposite. We'll set image height to height and then calculate image width. This winds up being image height times aspect ratio. Simple, eh? Now the image fills the height, but the excess is being cropped off the right side only. We can center it in the same way we did with height. Width minus image width, all divided by two. Beautiful, now I can switch the mode back to show all, and that works. And back to fill, and that works. Great. I can even change the size of the canvas, making it more square if I want. I'll set its height to 640, making it completely square. Fill works, and show all still works. We get more cropping and larger black bars, but it's still doing exactly what it should. But what if our canvas is more of a wide format than the image? I'll keep the same image, but I'll set the canvas height to 320. Now our mode is show all, but we're not showing all. We're cropping stuff off the top and bottom. And if I change the mode to fill, we're no longer filling. We're leaving black bars on the left and right. So it seems that if the aspect ratio of the container is larger than the aspect ratio of the image, the rules reverse. We can deal with that. Basically, our choice of calculations here doesn't only have to do with the mode. It's a combination of the mode and the relative aspect ratios. So I'm going to change things a bit here and create a variable called width first. Then I'll say if width first and calculate the width first and else calculate the height first. To calculate width first, I'll use a new function called get width first. 
This will need to know the current mode in both aspect ratios, the container and the image. So first I'll change aspect ratio to image aspect ratio. Then I'll create container aspect ratio. This will be width divided by height. Now I'll pass scale mode, image aspect ratio, and container aspect ratio to get width first. And finally I'll create that function. Now there are a few ways to do this logic. I'll just choose one. I'll start with a mode. If mode is show all, then width first should be true if the image aspect ratio is greater than the container aspect ratio. False otherwise. So I can just return that comparison. And if the mode is fill, then the opposite is true. So I can return the opposite comparison. And now things should all work just right. Fill fills. Show all shows all. No matter the size of the image or the container. As usual, this code is not fully optimized and not really set up for ease of reuse. That's your job. Hopefully you came away with the needed concepts though.